Got a big family? Starting a band? Do you just need a car that's big enough to nap in? I know that I do. Look, I am not gonna judge your reasons for needing a lot of seats and a lot of room, but I can suggest that you look for a three-row SUV to find it. It just so happens that Kia has two three-row SUVs, the new and popular Telluride and the redesigned for 2021 Sorento. Choose your fighter. Oh no, wait, that's my job to like tell you which one is better. Only in this case, it isn't really about which is the better car. These two SUVs aren't direct comparisons and they share many of the same features. So it's more about which is the better car for your family. And that I think I can help you with. Let's take a closer look. Do you like this video? Do you want more like it? Hit subscribe. And if you would be interested in a cash offer for your car, visit us at edmunds.com forward slash sell my car. Is there something on my, on my head? It's an automotive cliche to call a vehicle handsome, and what do we mean by that anyway? What, it's like got a good jawline and pretty eyes? Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, the Telluride does sort of have leading man looks with a tall, strong profile, a fashionable grille, mid-century modern, so hip, and wide set stacked LED headlights. Pretty eyes. It's not that handsome. Don't be jealous. The Sorento isn't quite as big and macho, but its redesign gave it a similar profile to the Telluride. Now, I don't like the front end quite as much, but I actually like the side view even more. I like the cut line and I like the flared fenders. Point is, all this stuff is subjective. These are both very pretty cars. Both of our Kias here are top of the line trim levels. That's pretty simple for the Telluride, which only offers four trims, all with the same drivetrain. This is a Telluride SX all-wheel drive. Sorento has more to choose from six different trim levels, and plus there's the X-Line off-road package. This is a Sorento SX Prestige X-Line. If you're shopping these two, bear in mind that both start in the $30,000 range and can be optioned, like our test cars here, well into the 40s. As makes sense for the larger flagship, the Telluride is always a little more expensive than a similarly equipped Sorento, which means that if you don't need the extra room in the Telluride, you can spend your money on upgraded options in the Sorento, which offers a lot of extras, from sunroofs to smoked silver trims. Now that you've been properly introduced, let's take a closer look to see if there are more differences between these two than just exterior design. Picking the right car for you is more than just figuring out what options you need. I mean, it is similar to picking clothing that you want to wear. It's, does the style represent you and does it fit you? One thing that I really like about the Sorento is that for somebody my size, I'm like five, three-ish, <laughs> it just is a very comfortable seating position. I can see out very easily, uh, the footrest works, the pedals are in the right place, and the armrests are in the right place. Seems like a small thing, but in the Telluride, as I will show you, um, I kind of have to stretch to, to fit into the armrest. I've found that in other vehicles too. Uh, Ford's trucks tend to just be too big for me. So Sorento, perfect size for someone my size. So the current fashion trend in automotive interiors is a lot of texture and a lot of different materials. I mean, similar to fashion trends in clothing. And you definitely notice that as soon as you get into the Sorento. You open the door and the seats have texture. I mean, in this trim level, they're leather too. But even in the uh, lower trim levels, there's kind of a pattern to them. There's metal trim, there's wood trim, there's piano black, which is terrible. It is not Kia's fault that piano black sucks. It sucks in any car that uses it. It looks really nice right now. But as soon as I touch it, it just gets like all smeary, rant over. Overall, there's just a lot of interesting things happening. It's very well laid out. Like if I wanna use the tuner knob, I can reach it without really having to stretch out of my driver's seat, which is nice. And if I don't wanna use a tuner knob, there are controls on the steering wheel as well. We've got a large touch screen. It's easy to use. You can figure out where everything is, even if you have never been in a Kia before. Kia's infotainment system is just pretty straightforward. Also, if you're stressed out, you can put on some calm sea waves. <sighs> put on the vented seats here. It's like cool, like a breeze. It's like being at the ocean. Of course, there's Bluetooth and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as well, so you don't have to listen to the sounds of nature. Now, talking about phone connectivity, we've got in this nice little console here, three USB ports and a charging pad. That's an option. So 
there's plenty of places to put your phone. It's all nice and neat. You can tuck it away, not leave it tangled all over the console. And then you could actually use your cup holders for holding beverages. And if like me, you tend to put your sunglasses in your cup holders, there's a nice little sunglass cubby right there too. And there's another cubby here that's like good for maybe the key fob or some change or some snacks. Basically what I'm saying is this is a good layout. I am comfortable. I think it looks nice and I can get to everything. It's smart. Well done. All right, getting into the Telluride straight from the Sorrento makes me feel like Alice in Wonderland. Like the world looks basically the same, only now it's all so much bigger. <laughs> Did I get smaller? Did the world get bigger? The world got bigger. You're gonna see a lot of the same materials that I liked in Sorrento. It's got wood trim, brushed metal, the piano black. Okay, I didn't like that. There's less of it in the Telluride. Screens in about the same place. The buttons for the screen run along the center here instead of being on the sides, which I like better aesthetically, but it doesn't really matter from like a usability standpoint. You're gonna see all of the same things that you liked in the Sorrento. You've got Apple CarPlay, you've got Android Auto, um, you've got some stuff for, for parents who might need to interrupt kids in the back. You've got driver talk, you've got quiet mode. If you want to listen to music, you don't want it playing through the back speakers, that kind of thing. So they're thinking, they're thinking about you. Down in the console, got the piano black that I don't like. You've got the layout that I do. Um, this console is very low compared to the Sorrento. So if you didn't like feeling kind of surrounded by the interior, you've got a lot more space in the Telluride. In fact, you have so much space that like, as I was complaining about, I can just barely use the armrests on like. So if you are bigger than me, you will like this car more. If you're the same size as me, you will like the Sorrento more. Cubbies and connections, they're all very similar to the Sorrento. So it's got a charging pad up here. You've got USB ports. It's got the little cover so you can cover it. You've got little cubby cup holders, no sunglass holder though. I thought that was really clever. They have one up in the top, more traditional. And then you've got a console and some extra cup holders in the back that you can share with the second row. The Telluride makes choosing an engine easy because there's only one, a V6 and an eight speed, no matter which trim you choose. The V6 makes more horsepower than any of the Sorrento's engine options, 291 horses and 262 pound-feet of torque, but it's also in a bigger, heavier vehicle, and you can feel the extra weight around corners and when you're slowing down at high speeds. On the plus side of a bigger, heavier vehicle, you feel less road interference, so it is a smooth, quiet ride. Sorrento offers several engine options, plus some hybrid choices. The turbo four-cylinder in this SX Prestige makes 281 horses and 311 pound-feet of torque. That's kind of a lot. The Sorrento feels nimble and quick, and the engine is responsive. I'm willing to say sporty. When it comes to which of these two SUVs is the quicker, you don't need to be a drag racer to recognize that the lighter, smaller Sorento with the turbo engine is going to leave the Telluride in the dust. You know, if that stuff matters to you. If it's towing that matters though, the Telluride can hook up to more. The Sorento's tow rating has been downgraded with the new smaller engine and is only 3,500 pounds now, as opposed to the Telluride's 5,000. On the other hand, the smaller engine and lesser weight of the Sorento means better fuel mileage. In these all-wheel drive models, that means 26 MPG combined compared to the Telluride's 21. So towing and hauling, Telluride. Quickly zipping past the gas pump, Sorento. Now, it seems like a no-brainer that the Telluride is going to beat out the Sorento for third row comfort, but let's take a look at them anyway. This is the Telluride. As you can see, I got plenty of leg room even when the seat is all the way back. Uh, the seats are also quite comfortable, like they're actually soft, and the seating position is good. I'm not sitting all bolt upright. There's an armrest, got two cup holders, a charging port, and then two things that are very important when it comes to third row comfort. A large window helps with uh, not feeling claustrophobic, not getting car sick, and you can control the AC or the heating. You've got your own vent back here. That's actually pretty unusual and it's really nice. All right, now we're in the Sorento. You will not be surprised to hear that there is less leg room back here and there's less sort of shoulder and hip room. I mean, the Telluride had a whole center seat that we don't have here in the Sorento. However, for a short trip, this would be okay. You get a cup holder, a place to put a cell phone. In this trim, you've even got charging ports. Notice though that you've got like a tiny little window and there's no air conditioning vent for me to control. Yeah, I'm hot. I'm sweaty, claustrophobic, 
I would rather be in the Telluride. Luckily, it's easy to get out. In the beginning of this video, I joked about finding the best car for napping. I wasn't really joking. With all the seats down, the Sorrento offers an impressive 75.5 cubic feet of space, which is enough for a snooze. If you're taller or you toss and turn, you may prefer the Telluride with 87 cubic feet. Either way, both vehicles are big when all the seats are down. When all the seats are up, there's more room in the Telluride behind the third row, although neither is big enough to carry six people and six people's worth of luggage. Maybe you need one for the peeps and one for the stuff. Both the Telluride and the Sorento showcase Kia's move towards design and technology. They're smart, they're good looking, either would look great in your driveway. In the end, the difference between them comes down to size. How big are your kids? How big is your garage? How big is your checkbook? For larger families, the Telluride offers a superior third row experience. For city dwellers, the Sorento is nimble and easy to park. It's also a lot of fun to drive. As is often the case when facing a difficult decision, I find myself wondering, why not both? <laughs>